नमस्ते आई होप यू ऑल डूइंग वेरी वेल फ्रेंड्स गेम फाइव इज अ कॉर्नर स्टोन इन अवर फील्ड फिमिलर टू ऑल ऑफ अस द concept outlined in the second edition of the game 5 provide clear strategies and direction to ensure the effective use of electronic system in our routine gxp environment this guidance has been a game changer in the field of computer system validation that clarify regulatory expectation and setting in new standards today i am excited to kick off a series where we will explore each chapter of this essential guideline in depth while it may seem like a simple reading it's important to remember that regulatory expectation are always tied to documented references understanding the guidelines thoroughly help us grasp the logic and assurance of the compliance so let's dive into the first episode of game 5 second edition and start our journey towards mastering this critical concept hi i am hema sharma and i am here with you and i'm excited to hear with you to explore this wonderful guidelines chapter by chapter so friends what is gam 5 to understand this second edition we just see the simple introduction with what are the chapters there is 53 chapters in first time introduction key concept life cycle approach life cycle phases quality risk management regulated company activities supplier activities and then efficiency improvement after this management appendix so how to manage all the validation from the initial to development and all these things are in this part and this is management appendix in which validation planning supplier assessment science based qrm category of hardware and software design review and traceability supplier quality parameters validation reporting project change and configuration documentation and information management system retirement infrastructure it infrastructure and critical thinking so this is related to management and then development appendix so in development part specifying requirement retired configuration and design management development and review of software testing of computerized system system description data migration agile software development software tools distributed ladder system and artificial intelligence and machine learning so the management and development appendix are divided in this way next part is operation appendix obviously when we hand over the software so we'll face lot of problems related to the operations and these challenges give us the next level of the experience and confidence to handling the computerized system so in this part there is introduction of operation hand over establishing and managing support service system monitoring incident management and problem management kappa operation change and configuration management retired periodic review backup and restore business continuity management security management system administrator and archival and recover and then the special topics cover like alignment with the astm e 2500 electronic production record and user application including spreadsheet patch and update management retired organization change some references and glossary in general appendix so this is the all about the index or chapter wise part given in this guideline so we can easily understand how they segregated the different activities in their guideline so it is easy to understand all of us each chapter so that we can throughout understand the actual concept in gam5 now 
there is three major requirement to use a GXP computerized system. We all know very well. First is patient safety, then is product quality, and then is data integrity. These three are the pillars and actual goal for all of us if we are working in the GXP environment. Yes, patient safety is overall first goal of all of us. Then product quality. If we have the product with the required quality, definitely we achieve our first goal, patient safety. After that, data integrity. Obviously, every product had some data and this data is our product and its integrity is our responsibility. So these three pillars and three goals is our GXP environment requirement. And this is the major aim of this guideline. Second part, GAM ensured the use of computerized system is compliance with the indented use with all the regulatory requirement. So whatever the regulatory in which we are working, GAM ensured that the computer system are within the compliance level. Then third, GAM provide part practical guidance on four major area. What are the four major area? Number one, facilitate the interpretation of regulatory requirements. We have different regulatories. And what is the interpretation of these regulatory requirements? GAM gave a simple interpretation of all of this. Then second, establish a common language and terminology because different guidelines, different requirements are somehow same requirement, but GAM establish a common language and terminology for all. Then promote a system life cycle approach based on good practice. A approach of system life cycle means from the initial when we got the idea to establish a system, a electronic system up to retirement and data safety and security. These all the approach, overall approach promoted by this guideline. Then clarify role and responsibility. In GAM, this is clearly mentioned what is the role and responsibility of which department or which person or who is responsible for whatever. So it gives a responsibility insights for all of us so that we can achieve our goal. Fourth, the GAMP is compatible with other methods also like quality system standard and certification scheme such as ISO 14971 which is related to risk management for medical device, a scheme of assessing and improving organization capability and maturity such as CMMI that is capability maturity model integration. Then software process models such as ISO 12207, approach of IT service management such as ITIL, ISO 900 series that is related to the quality management standard. Then iterative and incremental means agile software development and method and models. Seventh and important thing that where possible terminology is harmonized with the standard international sources such as ISH, ICH and ISO. The guide aim to be fully compatible with the approach described in the ASTM E2500 standard guide for specification, design and verification of pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical manufacturing system and equipment. So in this way, we can see the GAM is how important and how all the guidelines and references covers in this guideline. Then to understand GAM 5 guideline, 
there is the sixth major topic that why gun 5 second edition means rational two new and revised material third what is the purpose fourth what is the scope and fifth what is the business benefit behind this and what is the structure so first of all rational of gam 5 second edition while the overall approach framework and key concept remain unchanged technical content of the guide has been updated to reflect the increased importance of means gam 5 first edition have overall approach framework and key concept but in second edition reflect to increase importance what the for first of all it service provider including cloud service providers it service and cloud service provider importance involving approach to software development including incremental and iterative model and mode methods that is agile then importance to increase use of software tools and automation to achieve greater control higher quality and lower risk throughout the life cycle means how can we achieve the greater control with high quality and lower the risk throughout the life cycle of computer system then importance new and developing technological area such as ai and machine learning then importance of blockchain blockchain is a decentralized distributed ledger technology that uh, securely record transaction across multiple computer in a way that ensure the data integrity and security then importance of cloud com compounding service include storage database server networking software and many more then open source software o o s s which is software is released with a license that allow everyone to view modify and distribute the source code after that the next reason is knowledge management means focusing on how organization create manage and use knowledge throughout the life cycle of the product enabling organization to better manage their knowledge as a key asset in turn improving the effectiveness of the pharmaceutical quality system and providing operational benefits so this is the second reason then apq very important terminology that is known as advanced pharmaceutical quality means building industry for industry tools and program to help companies assess and improve their quality operations pharma four providing guidance aligned with the regulatory requirement specific to pharmaceutical industry to escalate number one the objective of pharma four is to enable organization involved in the product life cycle to leverage the full potential of digitalization to provide faster innovation for the benefit of patient second digital maturity and data integrity by designing are an enabler to an effective digitalization strategy and are underpinned by well managed automation and information system we see in figure 1.1 gam guidance adopt a patient centric risk based approach that enables innovation while demonstrating compliance with the regulatory requirement so just see this is one uh, figure 1.1 uh, i am taking from the guideline only this is the concept of di by design in which resource digitalization organization and processes then information system and the culture so this is the rational of this guideline guidance on the application of new and developing technologies area such as ai and machine learning blockchain cloud computing and open source has been included and updated which we already see in this part 
of rational in this one. So after this, just see what is the new and revised material. In this, first of all, Azile that is come in appendix D8, that is development part, then D9, software tools, then D10, distributed ladder system blockchain, D11 of AI and ML, means machine learning, and then M11, that is IT infrastructure, M12, critical thinking, and D1, specifying requirement, as to electronic production record. So some are new and some are uh, more developed. As a result of above addition and revision, the following guideline, including in pre uh, previous version of the guide, have been removed. So the previous version removed, that is first D2, functional specification, then O7, repair activity. So this is, and third one is, S5 managing quality within an outsource IS or IT environment. So this is the new and revised material in the GAM5 edition 2. This is the one diagram for evaluation of GAM guideline. Uh, and GAM5 come in 2008. After that, you are in with the edition 2 in 2024. Then purpose. Purpose, the guidance document is related to three main area. We know very well patient safety, product quality, and data integrity. Patient safety is affected by the integrity of critical record, data, and decision, as well as those aspects affecting physical attribute of the product. So patient face safety is first, and product quality and data integrity is always support the patient safety aim. This guide is intended for use by regulated companies, supplier and regulators. Supplier include provider of the software, hardware, equipment, system integration service, IT service provider and IT support service, both internal, external to the regulated company. So this guide has ensured that all the things are covered and what is the responsibilities of all these area and whatever the area, hidden area, not hidden area within computerized system implementation. The guide has been designed to use by a wide range of discipline and responsibility, including which we already discussed. What is the responsibility? First of all, what is the management? What is the role or responsibility of quality unit, research, development, manufacturer, laboratory, engineering, IT, support staff, and all associate supplier. GAM document are guide and not a standard. This is important thing. It is responsibility to regulated company to establish the policies and procedure to meet applicable regulatory environment. Consequently, it is inappropriate for regulated companies, supplier or product to claim that they are GAM certified, approved or compliant. Okay. So this is very important sentence written in the guideline. Then what is the scope? This guide applied to computerized system used in regulated activities covered by the GMP, pharmaceutical, including API, veterinary and blood. GCP, GLP, GDP, GVP, medical device regulation where applicable and appropriate. Example for system used as a part of production or the quality system and for some example of software as a medical device. This is known as SAMD. So this is the scope and the principle described can be applied to a wide range of computerized system. Detailed application of these principles to specific system type like IT, uh, infrastructure, process control system and analytical laboratory system is dis described in the supporting ISP good uh, practice guide. So the other, other guidelines help to establish the system. The scalable approach with 
application of critical thinking enable regulated companies to select the appropriate system life cycle activities. The use of this guide, however, does not guarantee compliance with or replace these regulated demands, which will define additional requirements where they are applicable. It is recognized that there are acceptable methods other than those described in this guide. This guide is not intended to place any constraint on innovation and development of new concept and technology. This is the another important line written in this guideline. Under the scope, the next part is the computerized system life cycle described in this guide for a regulated company should not be confused with the need for a defined approach or method for software development, which is the responsibility of the supplier. Okay. So this is clearly written. The computerized system life cycle described in this guide for a regulated company should not be confused with the need of a defined approach or method for the software development, which is the responsibility of the supplier. This guide defines activities and responsibility expected of the supplier in the provision of the product and services. These activities perform an important role in supporting regulatory company activities. So, regulatory company activities. Okay, regulatory company have the responsibility that they ensure that the product supply by the supplier and the supplier should follow all the requirements. The supplier may be third party or an integrate group of regulated company. Such internal group should follow process consent with the regulated company quality management system. They should follow the QMS system. Next, this guide use various diagram to represent the system life cycle. This diagram often present relationship in a linear representation. This is not intended to constrain the choice of development method and model. Okay. Then suppliers should use the most appropriate method and model, which may include iterative and incremental, evolutory, exploratory, and prototyping techniques or the use of DevOps approach. So this is given for the supplier also. Then modern system may have a complex supply chain involving multiple supplier. This guide aim to meet the need of each group. Then this is the scope part second, an important part. Then after business benefit. So what is the business benefit behind this? Simple things, effective, Reliable and high quality computerized system assist in achieving the primary objective of patient safety, product quality and data integrity. But there are major business benefit in having a defined process that delivers system fit for intended use on time within the budget. Once you establish the system, you got the business because you have the confidence that the system is fit for intended use one time and within the means on time and within the budget. System that are well defined and specified are easier to support and maintain, resulting in less downtime and lower maintenance cost. Adopting of the approaches described in this guide will assist regulated companies in managing business risk as well as quality risk. A specific benefit of both regulated companies and supplier include first, reduction of cost and time taking to achieve and maintain the compliance, early defect identification and resolution leading the reduced impact and cost and schedule, cost effective operation and maintenance, Effective change management and continual improvement, enabling of innovation and adoption of new technology, 
providing frameworks for user supplier and cooperation, assisting supplier to produce required documentation, promotion of common system lifecycle, language and terminology, provide practical guidance and example, promoting paramagnetic interpretation of regulation. So this is the business benefit about that. Structure, overview of game documentation structure. This guide form part of a family of documents that together provide a powerful and compressive body of knowledge covering all aspects of computerized system, good practice and compliance. Like 1.6.1. Overview of GAM documentation structure, which is this in figure 1.2. So, we will already see that computerized system compliance, supporting information material, good practice guide, appendix, and GAM 5 guide principle and framework. So, we got the compliances either in computerized system or in data integrity data integrity now second main body structure the main body introduction covered the purpose scope benefit and structure of the guide subsequent section of the main body covered the topic key concept life cycle approach life cycle phases concept project operation and retirement qrm Regulated companies' activities, fifth part, governs for achieving compliance, system-specific activity, ensuring compliance and fitness for purpose. It is the responsibility of regulated company, effective and constant regulated company activity for individual system, required a defined organization and governance framework, covering aspects such as policies, responsibilities, management, and continuational improvement. Supplier activities, while the responsibility of compliance lies with the regulated company, the supplier has a key role to play. Means the regulated company should ensure that supplier is doing all the requirement. And this guideline gives the responsibility of supplier too. Efficiency improvement, the guide provide a flexible framework for achieving compliant computerized system that are fit for intended use, but the full benefit can be obtained only if the framework is applied effectively in constraint of particular organization. So this is all about the introduction part in this guideline, which we can easily see what is the in guideline, what is not, what should we should remember that this is the key part I have included in these slides. And what is the structure of this guideline? Accordingly, we come with the next topic that is key concept to be continued in next series. So this is the first part. Hope you enjoy it. Friends, this is important to understand this guideline fully. So I think this small, small part can cover all the guidelines easily rather than complete in a one shot. So thank you. Remain with me watching the video. I will come back with the next topic with the key concept of GAM 5 second edition. Thank you so much.